Hi again, Red Hat developers. This is Jason with the Red Hat Developers Program. I'm here at day two of Summit 2017 in the Dev Zone with Devin Phillips, who's going to take us from zero to clustering in seconds with Eclipse Vertex. Thank you very much for the introduction, Jason. So, as you can see from the slide, clustering is easy. It's not something that most people would say. But I'm going to show you that with Eclipse Vertex, we can go from zero to clustering with just a few command line flags and actually build a scalable, high availability, or highly available application in just a few moments. So I'm Devin Phillips. I'm with Open Innovation Labs inside of Red Hat. And I have been a Vertex user and contributor for four years. And I hope to show you some of the really cool features. So Vertex Clustering Basics has two steps. Add clustering options to start up, start your application, you're done. <laughs> what? Really? So this is what I added to my Maven POM file to enable clustering. And you'll see here that we have some arguments that uh, launch our jar file. We add the cluster flag, we add the cluster host flag with, our, with this local node's IP address. And these extra options are to make it easier to cluster when you have multiple interfaces. So if you only have a single interface connected to a wired ethernet, you don't need any of these extra options. Uh, by default, it will not cluster on the loopback interface unless you tell it to. And so what this actually equates to is running the application from the command line looks like that. So you don't change anything in your application code and a Vertex application will cluster on a local network segment. There are also options with the InfiniSpan clustering manager that will tie it into Kubernetes. So if you're deploying an OpenShift container platform, it's really simple to get your Vertex applications up and clustering within OCP. So let's look at an example here. I have a, a very simple Vertex vertical here. All it does is set a timer that fires a method every approximately two seconds with a little random variation. And that timer sends a message on the event bus, and we log that message to the console. What does that look like when we run it? Well, we just say maven compile vertex colon run. And after a few seconds, what you'll see is every two seconds on the console, you'll see hello and a UUID. That UUID is generated uniquely every time we start the application. Now let's restart that application in cluster mode. So we'll say exec, exec, dash D cluster dot IP is going to be my IP address. So let me grab that. And we launch the application. And for the most part, you won't see anything different in the initial startup. You see a couple more messages around InfiniSpan, but then the application starts saying hello with the UUID. Let's drop over to another console here, and let's do maven exec exec dash d cluster dot IP equals my local IP address. And we'll launch another instance of this application on localhost. This will work on your local network segment on multiple hosts as well. But what you'll notice when this one gets going, we'll start to see two different UUIDs. And of course, the demo gods have frowned upon me again. <laughs> oh, that's right, because I'm trying to use a public IP on an isolated network. So I'm actually going to switch over to the loopback address. start up a second instance, and here in just a few moments, we should see two different instances with two different IDs, and we do. We can fire up as many instances as we want. Now that is clustering made easy. It doesn't get much simpler than that to build out a cluster. Uh, this code is available on GitHub, so if you 
are interested, scan this QR code. It'll take you to my public repo. There's a very nice readme that explains how to set this up and how to use it for your own projects. Questions? All right, thank you very much for your time and have a great day at Summit.